boy. She's got the massive. Ball wrapping, Jared, building, building. Hello and welcome to the vlog, New Forest Morphs. My name is Paul and today we're going to do a video on uh, breeding our uh, snakes. We're in October. We've already started the 2020-21 breeding season and we've had about eight or nine locks and we'll show you those locks uh, at the last stage. Let's just go through this together. This is our 2021 breeding plan and the first thing we do is we, we look at the um, pairings. So Let's just have a little look and see where we are. So the first male that we've got is the pastel leopard 100% het clown male. Here's the beautiful male. There he is. So he's got a lot of genes. If he proves to be, he's 100% het clown. If he proves to be 100% Pet pie, he's got an incredible set of genes, double recessive genes in him, plus he's got leopard and he's got pastel. So what we're hoping to do is put him to some various girls and prove them out and produce some interesting animals. So there he is. Beautiful animal. So he weighs in about 600 grams and that's the minimum weight that we we'll go with when we're chatting when it comes to breeding you don't want to be going under yeah, that yeah don't go that because a lot of males will go off their food yeah okay so we we'll go for about 600 grams of the males minimum we'll just put him back and then we'll just show you who we're going to put him to so on our breeding plan jared we look at the breeding plan we've got the pastel clown so let's get her out show you how oh, she's looking take you to her. yeah so where's the pastel clown? There she is, she's a beautiful animal. She weighs about two kilograms. And you can see she's lovely and plump, good size. She's been bowl wrapping. She's hooked up with um, an earlier male because we put the super, we put the pastel male to her earlier, uh, forgetting that we had that male that was coming up ready. So we kind of had a last minute change of plan. So. She might produce killer clowns because they did lock with the other pastel clown. I can show you the pastel clown as well. He's in here. His name's Bane. I'll bring him out, Jared, into the light. Easy to show you him in the light. There he is. So he's already hooked up a couple of times with different girls. But we're going to get the other leopard clown. So the whole point of putting the leopard into the pastel clown is to produce super pastel leopard clowns which are going to be a hundred potentially they could have um uh they could be het for pied because he's 50 percent het pied could pass on if, he's if he it. if he actually works out to be 100 percent het pied he could pass those genes on to the future clown project so we can end up with leopard super pastel killer leopard clowns that are het for pied can you imagine that that'd be just blow you away and we're planning to prove them out so Going to bring him to a normal pied, aren't we? Yeah, so let's show you the normal pied that we she's in shed at the moment, Athena. She's huge, Jared. She's over 2.2 oh, kilograms. She's literally caught her in the middle of shedding. Oh, she's just starting to shed. Yeah, that's her. She's just popped the, uh, popped the head off. Yeah. So once yeah. she's shed, we'll be able to put the male to her. So it's normally good practice not to put them together in shed, but we've had situations where we didn't realise the animals were in shed and they have actually locked, haven't they, Jared? Yeah. So um, the normal rule is not to put them together in shed and to give them a couple of days, once they've eaten, don't put them together while they're digesting their food because they can regurgitate and it can be messy. We've never had it, but we understand it can happen. So it's always good to rest your snakes for two days before you start pairing up. So our feeding day is a Monday. We'll start pairing up Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Give them a couple of days to digest. So let's go back to the other ones. We're gonna put that beautiful male to. So there's a girl we've got called Digit. We're not really sure what she is. Okay, let's have a quick look at her. Her Digit's in here. She's two kilograms as well. She messed up her tub. Yeah, she can do, do with a good clean. But if anyone knows the genes in that one, <laughs> let us know. We're not sure, are we, Jared? Yeah, I'm not certain on that. Yeah, but she's big enough to go. We'll just see what happens, see if that little fellow will do the business. And I think that's... And the last one's going to be the mother of the super cinnamon clutch. Cinnamon hip pied. I want to get some 
Oh, yes. Cinnamon, leopards, hep, clown, hep pied. Now, she's in shed as well, isn't she? So she's that one. Yeah. She's down, she was down as a black pastel, but we realised that she's actually a cinny. Yeah, definitely a cinnamon. Yeah. So what will that produce if we put the leopard to her, Jeff? Yeah? We'll get le uh, pastel, leopard, cinnamons, 50% hep clown, and then we could hit pies from that as well because she's hep pied. So we can prove them out. He's 50% hep pied. So it'll be pos hep clown, pos hep pies, or we get pos hep clown pies. Okay. So if we get a situation where we know that she's 100% pied because she's just proven out and brought, produced all those beautiful pies with us. Um, and I must give you a little update on that clutch because we did have two panda pieds, white panda white pieds, pieds in there. And unfortunately, they didn't make it through, which was so sad. And we've also lost Midge this week, so we've lost three snakes. And all Midge, due to kinking. And it's all down to kinking because when they're being fed, what happened to Midge, Jared? When we fed him, he couldn't pass the food through the. Through the. It was only a small kink, but we we thought we'd try. Yeah. And. Um, so it didn't pass through where the kink was, so uh, yeah. he starved to death, unfortunately. So, I said, really, we tried our hardest, I and mean, he was making progress, but he just couldn't pass his food through the kink, and uh, we literally just found him today, and he passed, so um, that was a bit upsetting, and we also lost two of the white panda pies to kinking as well. Yeah. And it's part of the hobby, really, is that when you've got 120 snakes, you're going to get one or two that are going to cause you issues and problems, and that's just part of the course, but we did our level best to try and help them. Um, we've only got one assist snake now, which is the banana that's in shed, and that looks healthy. It's about 50 grams, so hopefully he'll be fine or she'll be fine. Yeah, born um, at 30, yeah, so yeah. he's gaining weight, which is key. Yeah. So, Jared, going back to the breeding plans, so we've kind of covered the first male. Let's move on to the next male, which is the pastel clown, which we showed you, Bane. Now, we're going to put him to the banana spider and the butter 100% head clown so let's show you our banana spider she's already been proven she produced the baby banana we just spoke about and I think her name's Cleo she's in here you can see she's about two kilograms as well just look at the girth on her Jared yeah I put my hand there so you see, see how big she is chunky girl she's a lot bigger than she was last year she gave us I think how many eggs last year one one egg last year so hopefully this year she'll and that's what the banana more. that's this feeding is yeah so I think she's going to go for us this year, hopefully. And then the other one is one of my favourite pet clowns that I got about a year ago, and she's been pounding food. This is um, Jupiter. She's a butter, 100% pet clown. Just have a look at this girl. She's absolutely stunning. Beautiful, beautiful animal, Jared. She's a lovely temperament as well. I can bring her out in the light if you want to see her properly. Yeah, see her pretty well. But you see her okay? Yeah. Yeah, when the light goes on her, I just think she's getting now 1,800 grams. Yeah, at least. Yeah. She's a big girl as well. Yeah, she eats like a trooper. Look at the girth on her, look at that. There's my thumb. Yeah. So she's going to be beautiful. And what we're aiming for there is that we've got the pastel clown going to her. So that will give us... Pastel butter clowns. Pastel butter clowns, which would be wonderful. We've got one at the moment in quarantine. And it looks wicked, so... Yeah, we've actually... We've got a lovely male clown that's in quarantine because we've imported them from Europe. And they... I think they've been about a month in quarantine, six, so yeah. five weeks, so... We'll leave them a bit longer. Yeah, we'll give them a couple sure of months. Um, but there's a male there that's going to be an absolute powerhouse and we'll get him going when he's big enough. I yeah. think that'll be next year, Chad. Yeah, it will so be. So we won't bring him into this year's breeding plans. But we've got sufficient males on the clown front. Let's move on to male number three, which is... The banana super pastel orange dream. Yep, he's going to the bamboo, the pinstripe, the calico, and the yellow belly pied. Yeah. Okay. So what we didn't show everyone is the other columns we've got here is we've got the date that they're put together, a description of what's going to happen, and you can see that will be September, that will be October, that will be November, that will be December, and we'll work our way down on a month by month basis. And you can see, for example, the pastel leopard locked to the pastel clown on the 13th of October and we you just see we've given, given them a good few days break as well in between yeah and you can see also that there was no visual lock it doesn't mean to say they didn't lock but there's no visual yeah so let's go to the banana orange dream so with the banana orange dream 
he's shed at the moment. Yeah, he's not looking his best. He's, he's been an absolute stud. He must have made about three or four locks this year already. And he's carrying Super Pastel, Banana Orange Dream. So he's a powerhouse boy. We want to get Orange Dream into a lot of our females, don't we, Jared? Yeah. And it'll be guaranteed pastel because he's a super pastel. So there'll be no normals. Everything will be pastel, hopefully Orange Dream, and hopefully Banana. Banana's a wicked gene, isn't it, Jared? Yeah, I like banana. I think it just makes everything pop. It looks good. Let's see the girls that we're going to put into. Now he's weighing in at about 900 grams. And this is our pinstripe, which is 2.5 kilograms. We've had her about a year. She's pounding food. She used to be a trouble feeder, she did. Yeah. Not anymore. So we're going to make banana pins, pastel banana pins. And then bamboo. the other one, bamboo. There's our bamboo. She gave She's us our first this. clutch last year. Four beautiful animals, including your beautiful uh, bell. Yeah. Het for Ultra Mel. We put them to the Mojave. Mojave bamboo, Het Ultra yeah. Mel. So we're going to produce banana pastel bamboos, aren't we? Yeah. That's what we're aiming for there. We've got an F and F line calico as well. So Pringle. Just here. She's locked already to the banana. She's she coming in. Yeah, she's a gorgeous animal, Jared. She is currently uh, weighing in, I think she's, she's weighing in about, I think 1.8 now. Yeah. So that's a good size. We're just gonna keep building her up. And there's one other female I think the banana's going to. Can you remember which one Yellow it is? Yellow belly pie. Yellow belly pie. So what are we gonna produce here, Jared? We'll get our, well, pastel, banana, orange dream, yellow belly hep pies. Fantastic. So we're so trying to get our code on game up. Yeah. I think because we did so well on the pies this year, there was no point in making too many visual pies because we're building up a female army. So what we thought we'd go for is we're going to go for the hets and produce a long-term game here. So when you're starting your collection, it's really important to get some codons into some of your recessive genes so that when you put your recessive to recessives, they've got the chance of kicking out not only a visual, but all the, com all the other combinations can go in there as well. So there's a mixture between hitting visuals for your future breeding stock, but also hitting hets for long-term plans. And I think we've got the balance right here, Jared. Let's move on to the next uh, male. So what have we got next? Next we've got our Desert Ghost. Uh, he's been a star, that was from Marco. Desert Ghost, Enchi, 50% head caramel. And he's going to the pastel, the Enchi and the fire to produce a load of heads. And who's he locked up with so far? Uh, he's locked with the pastel twice and he's locked with the fire. The Enchi's still a little bit underweight. We want to get her a bit bigger yeah. before she goes in, but hopefully next month she'll be ready. Yeah. Now he's weighing in about 900 grams. We bought him from Marco literally three months ago and he was only, what, 400 grams? Yeah, he's just gaining weight. He's just pounding. Feeding and him normally. And, and he had sperm weight. plugs and he was locking perfectly okay. So we're very hopeful that we're going to get some Het Desert Ghosts. We want to build our Het Desert Ghosts recessives going forward. So let's just show the girls off. This is the Enchi. So there's the Enchi girl. She's a bit shy, but she's now, I think she's 16, 1700 grams now, Jared. Yeah. So she's big enough and solid enough to go. Um, and then also we've got, who else have we got to go to her? Pastel. Pastel's about maybe 20 kilograms as well. Yeah, she's a chunk. She's 2.8 kilograms. She gave us one infertile egg last year <laughs> to the clown. Well, no, she gave us one egg that was good but it went bad oh okay and then and then a couple of slugs and a couple well. of slugs but i think look at the if i show you my hand to her just look how big she is i mean she is huge absolutely huge jad yeah yeah so let's go for us. and then the last one was the one we just found that was locked which is the fire that they're, they're currently locked aren't they yeah so let's see how they're doing They've made a big they old shed, mess. They poo. Do you see how messy they are? But look, they're, they're, in, they're in lock at the moment. If you come in from this angle, you can see the lock. There it is there. Hello, little man. He's been a star, hasn't he? Absolute star. That desert look at that is shed. Good. That desert shed is going to look so good with the Who fire. Who right. We. Yeah. Welcome to the life Potent of breeding. Smell. smell. It's all happening there. This is really good. So this little tag, yellow means breeding. Green is in the shed. Yeah. Right, let's go through the other males, see what else we've got going. Next one is the lesser spot nose, and that's going to the pastel twilight when she's back up to weight. 
Now, what was interesting about the lesser spot notes, Jared, is that we thought we had a girl there, didn't we? We only found out it's a boy. Yeah, saw to us as a female, sexed it, had hemipenes. Yeah, so let's have a look at the pastel twilight that we're going to put them together. So what are we hoping to produce there? Well, super spot nose. That's called so a... So it'll be a cinnamon lesser pastel super spot nose. I think it's called a power ball. A power ball, they're called super spot nose. But if you get a super spot nose, they're really powerful because that will guarantee spot nose into everything you bet you put to it. So she is down here. She's over there on the left, yeah. To the left. What? She's over here somewhere. That's the male, lesser spot nose. Oh, lesser spot nose, sorry. Yeah, he's, he's in the shed. He's a pretty... Oh. It's called Bambi, but we might have to change that. Yeah. Well, I guess that could be a boy. Yeah. Bambo. Yeah, and he's again about 700 grams. Yeah, he's looking lovely. Yeah, he's in shed. And then the pastel Here we go, pastel twilight. twilight. You've got her there. She's a shed as well. She gave us those beautiful... Look at that. Iridescence in shed. Yeah, she gave us that beautiful clutch this year, didn't she? She proved to be a really good mum. Yeah, lovely babies from her. Did she give us... How many babies did she give Three. Three babies. The spot nose is going to the clown. We put that to the clown last year. Right, we're moving through them very nicely. So the next one we've got is the pied 100% het albino, 50% het toffee. Yep. And that's going to the albino leopard pied. Yeah. So what are we trying to make there, Jared? Uh, albino pies. So leopard, leopard albino pies. Show the girl first, and then we'll show the boy. She's got last year. Yeah. There's my thumb. So I the reckon girl. again she's 1.8 to 2 kilograms. She's lovely as well. Let's have a yeah. look I love the leopard and albino combo. Gorgeous. Beautiful look girl. at that. Almost looks like marble. I think the leopard makes the albino look even better. The male is here. So he's called Cookie, Emily's favourite little pied. <laughs> look at him, he's a star. He's only about, what, 800, 800 grams? Yeah, he's an absolute star. He's got a lot of genes in him. We're going to prove him out, aren't we? So he's got. What's he got? He's here. He's 100% pied, 100% hair albino, 50% hair toffee. So what that's going to do is, you see Daisy, our uh, albino leopard. She's 50% hair pied. So if he breeds to her and we end up with some leopard albino pieds, she becomes 100% hair for pied. If they don't produce them, we can try again next year, but we're guaranteed their offspring to be het for pied, so we're gonna we can't lose. Yeah, but and there'll be lavenders. Well, fifty of them. 50 not lavenders, the albinos. Albinos. Yeah. yeah, sorry. Yeah, so that's a really exciting project. We bought them as a pair from Chiron at Wheelie Good Balls, and they're now ready to breed. So you know, we're looking forward to some hopefully getting some eggs on her. That'd be fantastic. Yeah. Right, let's move through, Jared. The next one we've got is the cinnamon pied and who are we putting into right now it's being bred to what we're trying to prove out it was sold as 100% het pied she gave me some babies but none of them turned out pied so we'll try one more time with a pied and see if we can prove her out if not she'll be a normal yeah and you show the daddy Quite a few he's, uh, he's our star male for this year, I'd say, Jared. He's made a lot of babies for us. We think he might be pastel, actually, because we've got babies that look very pastelish. They're very look, dark as well. Look at his boy. head. He's got a dark head. Beautiful, oh. beautiful pattern. Lovely animal. And he keeps on getting new black spots around him. So, beautiful. Not mites, though. There you go. I don't you see. Just scales. Yeah. All right, let's put him back in the jar. Just moving through quickly. So we've got the Mojave Ultramel. Nope. Mojave Ultramel, yeah. Yeah. So he's been a stud for us as well. He produced a lot of our Ultramels this year with that hair Ultramel. So he's going to go to the same girl again. And he's going to go to the... He's not going to the... Oh, yeah. Ultramel, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the 100% hair Ultramel. And the Mocha and the Phantom. That's his job for this year. So three girls. Let's show him, show him again and the three girls. Yeah, he's in a shed as well. So the ultra male is over here. There he is. Look at that blue eye. Deep blue. So we're waiting for him to shed before we put him to the girls. Yep. Although he did lock just a couple of days ago. <laughs> and I didn't realise he was in shed, Jack. He locked to the um, Phantom. Phantom. Literally two days ago, before we shed this. 
Big old phantom girl. She's a new girl we bought this year. And we're hoping to produce purple passions, aren't we? Yeah. Which are going to be hit for Ultramel. Which is going to be fantastic. Ultramel. So purple passions hit for Ultramel. Awesome, Jared. We'll show you what a purple passion looks like. We've got one here. Stormy. And she's building up. She's nearly a thousand kilograms. Yeah, she's getting nice. We got her 150, didn't we, about six months ago. And she's really building. Yeah. Lovely animal. Yep. Beautiful. Jared likes her. Can you imagine having that with her Ultramel? See what that does. Yeah. Um, what are the other two girls we want to put the Ultramel to? Get out. Colossus. Just watch yourself. She comes out like absolutely <laughs> Hello, big girl. 3.5 kilograms, our biggest snake. She gets up to four and a half when she's full of eggs. But I reckon she'll go for us, Jared. She's massive. And then the other one is the Mocha. Yeah. Which we've had a look at the Mocha. So that'll give us some more bells. So we're only for some bells. bells. Blue Eyed Lucy called Bells and Ultramel. So that'll be a Bocca. A Bocca? <laughs> a Bocca. A Mocha Mojave. Yeah. But we found out M &M. that we bought a, what we thought was a female bell last year from a reptile place in Boscombe. They sold us a male. And I was quite gutted because I paid big money, I think it was 350 quid for her. I feel really gutted, so I should have gotten to sex it and looked at it myself, but I was new to the um, hobby. So that can happen where people sell you snakes that aren't what they're supposed to be. So we've got two bell males at the moment. <laughs> but One might be up for sale soon. Yeah. Um, but what we'll do is we're going to try and produce some female lessers, uh, female bells, so that we've got then a nice female that we can produce some bells with and hopefully get plenty of eggs. Next one is Joker the Clown. Yeah, he's been at Stud last year. Again. Well, see, who's he going to go to? He's going to the Spot Nose, which we think might have something else in a very beautiful snake. Very beautiful snake and yeah. the cinnamon. Right, and what are we trying to achieve with that, Jared? So we want to get some more Spot Nose Net Clowns to help us with the Batman project. Yeah. She is down here. She's gorgeous, Jared. She's lovely. Look at that. Ever so seen a Spot Nose like that? Yeah, she's so dark, Jared. I think that when we produce the leopard, um, when we produce the Batman, her black cheek is just a pop. Once that leopard goes into the clown project, more the cinnamon. So, cinnamon clown's going to be wicked. And here's the daddy. The Joker. He's a big boy here. Joker of the pack. There he is. But he breeds. He'll yeah. breed to a stick, that boy. He's 2.5, Jared. 2.5. So, so he's going to two girls, is he? Is there one more girl? Just the two, I think. I thought there was three. Have a look. Yeah, just the two. Just the two. Okay. And who have we got next? The uh, the bell. Right. To the lesser platinum. <laughs> this is the funny one. This is what's really funny. I mean, we thought we had a female bell, and I could have bred this last year. And she's down here, Jared. If you have a look at that one there. Turns out that she, Jared popped her, and turns out she's got heavy peens. So it's a big old heavy peens with sperm Mojave. plugs. It's a Mojave lesser, whereas the other one's a super lesser. We might still want to keep the super lesser, Jared. And we're going to put her to what we thought was cappuccino, which we thought was a boy. Is a platy daddy, isn't he? Lesser platy daddy. She's is what it was sold as. Platy mum, platy mummy now. But look at the size and the girth on on him. On as her. you can tell, we love our cat. <laughs> I love what I love is the platinum colours in here. And look at the girth, Jared. She's yeah, building she's doing follicles, well. I promise you. She's over two. She's two point something. So I'm really pleased because even though it was a bit of a mistake, the sexes were back to front. Turned uh, out in our favour. It has because the girl was much bigger to go. So yeah. you know, it'll work out in our favour in the end. Um, Next one is Blackhead Lavender. Then we go to the Lavender Albino. Yep. Um, then the dream is cool. The dream is cool, but the la the black-haired lavender isn't big enough yet. So we'll show we'll show you him when he's bigger. And uh, we've got the um, last one, which is the dream is cool. He's not up to size yet. He's almost there. So let's get him out. Should we have a look at him? He's getting big though. He's plumping up. Look at that. Yeah, I think he weighs over four hundred grams now, Jeff. Or fifty. So he needs another 150 to 200 to be um, big enough to breed. Yeah. But we've got big plans for him, haven't we, Jared? He's beautiful. We're going to create some double and triple heads with him because he is a double uh, recessive at the moment. Yeah. 
but we can lavender put that pied. lavender pied. So what we can do is we'll, we actually spent some time thinking about the following year's breeding plan, but we're going to keep back a couple of our girls for him for this year, because I reckon later in the year he'll be good to go. And why not produce some het dreamsicles? And he'll be going to this pastel yellow belly pied when he's big enough to give us some lovely yeah. yellow belly pastel pied het lavenders. Because yellow belly and lavender is all wicked. That's a good picture. And what's the other one we're going to put into? So then the other one is the orange dream yellow belly 50% het pied. Uh, she's nowhere near big enough at the moment, but look, I've got to bring her out to show you in the light, Jared, because this girl has got to be one of my favourite pieds, het pieds. Look at the colours on that. I don't know if the camera's getting that jab, but she, as she matures, she's getting brighter and brighter. She's wicked. So she's... Orange dream, yellow billy, 50% hip pied. So by putting a pied dreamsicle to him, we're going to obviously get our double hip. But we end, could end up with actually a visual because that 50% pied might be 100% pied. Exactly, so we could get a yellow belly, orange dream, Visual pied, 100% hit lavender. Oh, That's the plan with this one. That would but be absolutely wicked. That'll be later on down the line, next year probably. She's only She's 800 grams, 800. just under. There's no way, I don't think she'll be big enough for this year, Jack. No. But next year, oof, she should be ready. Yeah. So I think that's all that's our all males. On. That's all our breeding plans. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, if there's anything you would like to ask us, please do feel free to make any um, comments in there. Um, so I think what we'll do, we're going to end now with what I call lock, locking action. We're going to show you all the current footage of all our locks with all these pairs that we've done. Most of them have locked up already and they started in September. So Jared, we're hoping by April next year we should have some further clutches. Yeah. We've closed down our incubator because all of the final eggs were cut and hatched uh, last Just week. The final. Do you want to see the babies? We'll do an update when they're out of shed. Yeah. There's a little update, quick sneak peek. Sneak peek. There you go, pied, cinnamon pied, super cinnamon head pied with a beautiful ringer. Shall I bring them out in the light? Because I mean, they are still in shed, but I think you'll look, they'll look better in the light. There we go. There he is, looking beautiful. That's super cinny, we're not sure if it's a spoiled kill yet. We haven't sexed them yet, but. When it's quite shed. hard. I find, I find it quite hard when they're this small. When they're about 150 yeah. grams, I find it a lot easier. Yeah. But they're looking yeah. good, Jared. And your favourite's got to be the Super Cine. Yeah, he's, I've always wanted one. And that's him. Got a little paradox on him there. Yeah. And there. And Ringer. Well, you got a lovely picture in the um, light box the other day. Yeah, if you look at our Instagram, you'll see. In the light box. The scales, it almost looks edited, but we never edit any of our photos here, so. Yeah, and we've had so many people like it. It's our best, most, I think it's our most popular um, picture on Instagram, isn't it, Jared? It is, yeah, yeah. So, everyone loves him. And it's, only been up, it's only been up a couple of days. I can't wait for it to shed out. Yeah. Pop it so, back in there. all is looking good. And the only other thing I forgot to mention, Jared, is for future projects, we've still got, for the following year, our VPI lightning pipes. And look, they're coming on nicely. Yeah, can we spill the water? We have to clean that up. Yeah, lovely. And the other thing to watch out for is the ivory, which is our pastel, super pastel ivory is getting up to size. He might be big enough later in the year, Jad. Yeah. But the girl, which you know we had the super gravel, let's just give you a quick update on her. She's nearly a thousand grand. I can't believe how big she is. Where's the super gravel, Jad? Can you see it? She? Super gravel. I'm not sure. I'll find her. Yeah, I think she's somewhere around here. I think she's somewhere at the top somewhere. Yeah, she's oh, the there. Electra. We go. Electra. I knew she was at the top. <laughs> she's on the top of my list. That hide and seek right here. Yeah. She is actually, we haven't weighed her, but we could. I reckon she's not far off 900. Let's look how beautiful she is. And we got her in at 350. Yeah, get a nice close up. She's an absolute gorgeous girl, isn't she? So when she's ready, Jared, we've got the highways coming. Pastel highways. And that's going to be snakes. awesome. And we want to get that to the clown as well, because if you've ever, ever seen a pastel highway clown, almost looks like a reticulated python. Yeah. So that's about it for our breeding plans for now. We will show you our 
future plans as they unfold. The thing about breeding is, Jad, you've got to, the rotation, we didn't discuss the rotation, so how often would you rotate a male and how many weeks would you give it between putting the male out for breeding? Because there's certain ways and methods that... If you're lucky enough to have a um, ultrasound, you can check the follicles and make sure the follicles are big enough. Yes. But we just go, we try to make sure that they're always in at least once every month mm -hmm. to see a lock and we give them about two or three days in between uh, locking. Okay, that's good. And if you don't get a lock, don't worry because sometimes they lock at night and you don't see them. Yeah. Secondly, I've heard of stories and we've done it ourselves where after a few days rest, we put the male back into the girl and we found a lock three days later. Yeah. Now, it may be that they've got to have a little bit of romance foreplay, if you like, before they get going because you put a male and female, particularly a brand new male, he doesn't necessarily know what to do and there are some things you can do to get him stimulated. What are the things that you can do, Jared, to get a male stimulated to get going? I've never done them myself, well, I've done one myself. Some people say put them in with another male for an hour or two, Yeah. and they'll start periscoping and getting ready to breed. Yeah. Um, another thing you can do is you can stick in the shed of another male with him for a bit. And what does that do, Jared? And he just gets the scent of another male and starts competing and then jumps straight on the girl. Yeah. Um, you can leave the scent all in the female. Like if you look at the fire, her shed has been left in there. Her wee is there. We, we leave it dirty and stinky in there so that all the smells are going on, producing all those hormones. Better and visual on the lock now. Yeah. Get a better visual on that. Beautiful. He's a star, isn't he? I love the desert ghost, Gene. And with that fire, of course, it's going to be brilliant, Joe. Okay, and then there's some other things you can do as well, isn't there? Because um, are there some other tips and techniques to help with the breeding because if you get a male I suppose to check the male you can actually um, check to see whether he's producing sperm plugs and would you do that the same way that you would pop an animal yeah that's how you find out so you know when you're trying to sex an animal and you're popping if you actually pop a male that you think is ready to go if he produces sperm plugs then you know that at least he's sexually mature enough to do that should we try and do it do you want to do it yeah okay yeah, yeah. okay We'll grab a male, let me know that's the size. We'll give it a go. So this is our pastel clown. Mm -hmm. We'll pop him there. See if we can see any. We'll just zoom in. See that? See that little white bit there? White bit? Oh yeah. Oh, that's, yeah. It. that's a sperm plug right there in his hemipene. Wow, that's really good, Jared. There you go. He's up Another one on the other side. So he He's is ready and mature. Full to go. Well done, Jared. There you go. Sperm plugs there. Fantastic. So every time we put him in, now we've got to we've got to let him rest for a little bit because he's obviously just eaten. Um, but he's good to go, isn't he? So that's yeah. how you he's work about out. Seven hundred grams. Yeah. Which usually is a good sign, but if they're not sexually mature, you won't find any sperm plugs. Okay. Thank you for sharing that, Jack. And then with the girls, um, to some, oh, this is the point I was going to make. When I was in here the other day, I had two girls that um, were at the en end of the rubs. And I'll show you which ones they were. One of them was the fire girl, which you've seen lock up. Yeah. And I hadn't put a melt to her for many, many weeks. And she kept on wanting to come out of her rub. And I was thinking, there's no food in the building. What is she interested in? She was looking for love. And these girls are looking for love. They, their hormones are all over the shop and they really want to get going. They were actually sniffing all the males. I thought the males right next to the females here. And they must have been smelling the hormones off the males. Must have aroused them. And they were looking for love. Paul, AKA the love doctor. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so what was really interesting is I, I let the fire go explore and she started going up and down the rubs of the boys, trying to get into the boys' homes. I didn't tell you that, Jared. <laughs> so that's why I said to Jared, as soon as the desert ghost is shed, Let's put the desert ghost in there and look what's happened. We've got a hookup. And obviously, he did not wait until he's finished shedding because. Uh, <laughs> well, I thought he was shed. shed right there. Do you know, he, <laughs> no, because he's such a lovely looking animal, look how clean he is now. Yeah. Even with a shed, he looked clean. Agreed. And I didn't really know he was not <laughs> shedding. He's actually, but also, the other thing about animals shedding is when you get a male and female together, they can shed better because they use each other's muscles to rub off each other. That's true. So, I think what's going on here is that they're, if they're ready for love, they'll shed and they'll go for it. And they can make love in shed as well. So that was the one thing. And there was another female. Oh, the other female was Digit. Now Digit always wants to come out and play. 
but she was gagging for it. I mean, she was coming out and I was thinking, God, I've got to get Mel in her at some point. So there's another indicator that when you, um, when you are preparing to pair, use your observation skills to see what the animals are doing. If they're gagging to come out, either for exercise or play, normally it's to, they want to breed. The other thing is, um, I want to mention, is Jad told me last year, wait for the stormy, rainy weather to come. Now last night, it chucked it down here. Yeah. And it was so wet and stormy that that stimulates their, something in, in the instinct of an animal is that when it's stormy, snakes want to breed, don't they Jad? Something about the air pressure. Is it the air lower? pressure? So yeah. lower air pressure. I don't remember if it's lower or higher, but something yeah. to do with air pressure. Stormy weather is good for breeding. Well, I know from a fishing, I've got another fishing channel. I didn't mention this to you, but I'm actually a, a salmon fisherman and I have another YouTube channel where I teach people how to catch salmon. And I've taught the principle that you catch salmon on low pressure because the salmon rise on water as the water, the rain hits the water. And it's similar with every animal that the stormy weather, low pressure stimulates them to do something. So they're all connected to the weather. So there's another tip. Any other tips on the breeding side, Jack, that you can think of? I think that's it for, for yeah. what I know. If anyone's got any other tips they want to share, please, please put me in the free. comments. Yeah, put them in the comments. So thank you, Jared, for being our cameraman today. Thank you for sharing the breeding plans. Um, this is New Forest Morphs. My name is Paul. Put up a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Uh, please let me know what your thoughts are on our plans. If you've got any other ideas that you can maybe mention and maybe help us be very much appreciated. Hit that notification bell if you want to get regular updates. We're posting about three videos a week at the moment. It might stay that way. We'll see where we go. The next video that we're going to do is we're going to get Jared to design and build our own incubator from, from a, 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 a defunct drinks cooler, which we bought brand new and didn't work. So we're going to bring you that video uh, shortly. As soon as the fan arrives, we'll uh, Yeah, we're going to order a fan, order a map, heat maps requirement. Thermostat. Thermostat. Once you've got those, it's very easy to convert. And we'll show you how that's done on the next how-to video. So it's goodbye for me, goodbye from Jared, and goodbye from New Forest Morphs. caught in the act. See that perfect shed coming off. Wow, she looks gorgeous, Jack. She doesn't take very long. She's only been doing that about 10 minutes. Literally. You just put a little bit of water on as well, didn't you? A little flick of water, make it a little bit more humid in there. They use their heads to get it off them. They start with their heads and then they roll their body through it. Look how beautiful she looks, Jack, out of shed. She looks lovely. That means that she's going to be ready for the desert ghost as soon as he's finished his job. It's true. Yeah. That's really good. Look at her, she's showing an interest in us now. We better let her get on with it. Yeah, we'll leave her to get on with it. Fantastic, thank you, Jared.